Hi, it's Mr. Rowe. Today we are going to continue with our brass uh, security cage and I'm going to show you how I made these curved corner sections, those two right there, using a heat plating technique. So here's a little sneak peek of the final picker cage. That's where the marijuana is kept inside there. And that's a solid brass cage. You can see the pieces I'm working on right now are on the right hand side, those curved flat bars. So if you watch part one and two of this uh, video series, you'll see I used a mag drill to drill and tap the ends of the half inch bars to put the, the balls on. And I use a Harbor Freight cross slide vise and my mag drill to face the ends of the one inch bars. A um, little bit unorthodox. But Mr. Rowe, why didn't you just take it to a machine shop? Well, there was a pandemic and every single thing was closed. So what I'm making is a brass security cage called a picker cage that will sit on top of this cabinet that we just finished. That is uh, the paint color. It's called Dead Salmon. Anyway, I think it, uh, I was skeptical at first, but I think it turned out, uh, I like the color. Nice curve on the corner. So anyway, so the brass will sit on top of that counter. There will be a curve section right here. So this curve section is going to mount on here, and then there's another one that mounts on here and it will have more of the uh, one inch brass spindles with the balls on the ends you know all those holes you mean half inch brass but there's no way i was going to make this out of solid brass there's no way i could bend that uh like a one inch sorry inch and a half bar the hard way it would be very hard to do with solid brass so what i'm doing is a mild steel this is a laser cut piece and i'm going to do a bra heat brass plating on it. What I'm going to use is one of these, uh, it's just a cheap, I think it's Simonez. Um, it's a car polisher actually. So it's variable speed. That's why I like it. And I've used it. I have, uh, it comes with sanding discs and I've used it, uh, for like reclaimed wood, things like that. It actually works really good for doing rough sanding because you don't need, you can keep it nice and slow and just remove lots of the uh, dirt and grime and stuff like that. Anyway, so this is a solid wire brush on here. It's not, uh, you have to be careful you don't get yellow zinc plated. These are solid, so I ordered this special in. And, solid brass um, wire. You just want brush. to keep the speed really slow. These are kind of weird. They almost like, like it barely wants to start. And then the nice and slow. So I've done this technique before in my propane forge, but this technique, you can't get the metal too hot. And I actually struggled uh, doing it with the forge because it always got the metal too hot. I actually had to always wait till it cooled down and it was kind of tricky. So what I'm going to do this time is use an old oven. And I use it uh, for doing a little bit of powder coating and things like that, small pieces. So I have another one of these. I uh, polished it all up. So I took off all the mill scale, um, got rid of those. You can see the laser, where you can see that? The laser left some, some marks as it was cutting that thick of metal. So I polished all those out so it's nice and clean because when it's done, it, you want it to look like a solid piece of brass, right? So it's just heating up, and when those elements shut off, I have it on braze at the maximum, which is 500 degrees Fahrenheit.
So you can see it's barely taking. I don't even know if you can see it. It's got a slight brassy tinge on it. But this is, it's cooling down way too fast. So, either the oven's not getting hot enough in the first place, or it's just cooling down really quick. Like the vise is gonna suck the heat out of it. You know, its shape is like a giant radiator, so. Uh, propane forge time. So you can tell when the metal reaches exactly the right temperature, the uh, the brass will kind of flow right onto the surface quite easily, and there's a lot more drag, and you can feel the moment when it starts to be applied. So the trick is to keep heating up the steel and adding layers without getting it too hot in the forge and burning off the layer you already put on. So it's possible the oven would have worked. This is, uh, you know, it's three eighths thick bar here. It's pretty thick. So I feel that the oven would probably work on something thinner, but uh, I haven't tried it to know for sure. But it was definitely taking a little bit, so you would think it would work. see how it's it's actually not taking right now and then if you watch closely there's just the moment right then where suddenly it's being applied like magic you can really feel like brass when when the brass is at the melting point it's a lot more friction So layer by layer, I'm just adding a little bit of thickness at a time. Um, this is an interior project, so it's never going to really get wet. So it doesn't need to be a really thick layer. This wouldn't work for outside, of course. It would, it would rust through fairly quickly. But you can imagine how there's lots of applications where you could use this, like knives, knife handles, um, I don't know, different decorative stuff you could do. I made um, this little table. This is the first thing I tried the technique on. It's about uh, it's about five years old now, and uh, it's got a nice age patina to it. So now I'm using the torch to do just little kind of spot treatments, so I don't uh, overheat it within the forge. I can just kind of direct the heat where I need it, and do little touch-ups. The metal's already quite hot from being in the forge, so I'm just uh, keeping the couple of the areas warm enough to work with. So there you can see, that's what we started with, mild steel. And that's with the brass coating on, and that's a solid brass bar that's been heated, and they all need to be polished. They're not polished, but um, well, I guess polished, but not shiny, not shiny polished. So, got the corner assembled. Uh, I think those bars need a little bit more tweaking, but they blend in uh, like the flat bar. 
They blend in pretty good with the rest. You remember we're on the inside, so and it's also laying down, so the customer, you know, you're gonna be looking at it. Sorry, that's from space. <laughs> you're gonna be looking at it from like over here. Basically, and then looking up at that. And then, like I explained before, there's a, a short section that goes up like this, which I've pretty much made. So these top plates, most of them won't be visible. So I'm only going to do the, the heat uh, plating on the parts you can see. And I realized I messed up. This one should not have any holes in it, like this one doesn't. So that's the end of part three. In part four, I'll be showing how I bent the half inch and one inch bars for the, the top of the cage. I had to use the propane forge to, uh, to bend all of those curves across the top you see there. And I have another video that shows, if you see the little foot rails down at the front, of the uh, the customer service station there um, you can watch my video on how I made those thanks for watching